you in your Bibles this morning, we're turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians, and we're in chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, and come with me please to verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. That's true, you know. If it's only in this life that we have hope in Christ, well, then of all men we're most miserable. If it's only in this life we have hope in Christ, well, then we have nothing to smile about. We have nothing to sing about. We have nothing to shout about. If it's all in this life we have hope in Christ, well, Paul would be right in saying that we would be of all men most miserable. Boys, I'm telling you, We'll be the most miserable lot in the world. But look at verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead. Glory to God for that. And became the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, that every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And come with me now to verse 51. And the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of God the Holy Spirit, writes, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal shall, must put on immortality. And so, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And we know that the Lord will bless to our hearts this morning that public reading from His own sacred, inspired Word. 
nine days following the death of King Edward the Seventh, Canon Henry Scott Holland, on Sunday the 15th of May 1910, preached a sermon, a sermon that he titled, a title that was taken from the words that we find in Job chapter 18 and verse 14. That sermon that Canon Holland preached in St. Paul's Cathedral in London, he called his sermon the King of Terrors. The death of King Edward the seventh was so great, the nation was plunged into mourning. And Canon, Canon Henry Scott Holland felt the call of God to preach the sermon called The King, the King of Terror. You know, he was speaking of death. And child of God and dear unsaved friend this morning, death is the king of terrors. The king of terrors. And as Canon Henry Scott Holland that Sunday morning, the 15th of May, 1910, as he continued to preach his sermon, he said, the king of terrors is the cruel ambush in which we all must fall. The good will fall as well as the bad. It will come to the just as well as the unjust. It will come, it will come to the happy as well as the unhappy. It will come to the rich as well as the poor. And every time death comes, and every death time the king of terror moves, death cries in its wake, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Canon Holland went on to say, the king of terrors, sits on a pitiless throne. The king of terrors reigns on a merciless throne. He is irresistible. He opposes all natural life. He will come to us all one day individually. He concluded his message with these words. The king of terrors has conquered our king of England. Today, the royal casket lies in state at Westminster Hall. And inside the royal casket lies, lies now the mystery the mystery of death. Dear child of God, dear unsaved friend, have you ever paused for a moment to ponder the fact that we all face death You may say to me, George, this is a ministry meeting. I know it is. 
And God's going to minister to us. And I'll tell you, maybe, maybe this morning there's nothing we all need to be ministered upon than this subject of death this morning. We all face it. In fact, death this morning is seven days more near our heels than it was last week. And death this morning is described in my text, verse 26 of First Kings, sorry, First Corinthians 15. The last enemy. That's how Paul describes it. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And the Lord wants us to focus this morning on this last enemy. Tell me, what does death mean to you, child of God? What does it mean to you? Let's remember, every one of us remember, death, the last enemy, entered into this world through the worst enemy. Our worst enemy, listen, the worst enemy is not death. He's the last enemy. But he's not the worst enemy. The worst enemy is sin. And the Bible says, for as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and death has passed upon all men. Sin was the door that allowed death in. And whether you're a Christian, or whether you're not a Christian, you remember this this morning, if the Lord tarry, you and I are earmarked for death. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto men once to die. Second Samuel chapter 14, verse 14, it says, for we all must needs die. This morning, how do you view this last end? The Bible speaks. The Bible speaks much of them. The Bible speaks concerning the death of the wicked. The Bible speaks of the death of the righteous. The Bible speaks about the death of the ungodly. The Bible speaks about the death of a fool. And the Bible speaks this morning concerning the death of a saint. But glory to God, the last enemy that is to be destroyed is death. Death for the saint. It's painful at this side, but it's paradise at the other side. Death for the unsaved. Now, you tune in. It's painful on this side, but it's punishment on the other. And dear unsaved friend, this morning your ear marked for death. And it's about time you trusted the Savior. It's about time you thought about this, dear unsafe friend, because death is coming, and not one of us in this meeting knows how far death is away from any of us. In fact, I could be the next to go. Do you see, if death was to come to you today, you'll never find mercy. You'll never find hope. And I'll tell you something else, you'll never find Christ. And for every man, and for every woman that's sitting now in this meeting, if you're not saved, will you listen? 
Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Because in 24 hours' time, it could be all over. Christ is the Savior of sinners. And can I plead with you on save folk this morning? Seek Christ this morning. Trust him. I'm telling you, trust him. Time's running out. Please, seek the Lord this morning. You've shunned him for years. Don't shun him this morning. Because who knows who will be at the front of this church in this week. Thank God he can be your Savior this morning. And if you're troubled about these things, you speak to me now. But maybe more important, you seek the Lord. Every graveyard, I, every funeral, every wake brings us all face to face with the last enemy. You know the first thing God wants? We need to learn something about the last enemy. The first thing we learn about the last enemy this morning is the deadliness of this enemy. You don't need me to tell you this morning there's nothing more deadly than death. Do you see death? Death is the one enemy that shoots the burning arrows of grief. Death shoots the burning arrows of sorrow. And those burning arrows of grief and those burning arrows of sorrow, they lodge deep into the innermost parts of the mind. And they lodge deep into the innermost parts of the heart. The arrows that the last enemy shoots, grief and sorrow, they burn deep into the innermost parts of the mind and the heart. Those who have stood at fresh graves and buried half your heart in it know only too well the deadliness of the last enemy. You know, child of God, this morning, it's not only, it's only until death takes a friend from our side. Only until death takes a husband from his wife. It's only until death takes a wife from her husband. It's only until death takes a child from its parents' arms that we know anything about the deadliness of the last enemy. That's every pastor's nightmare. as it is every policeman's nightmare. And having to go to a home and to break the news to the family of a sudden and an unexpected death. My father had to do it once in his policing career. He says it was worse than the night he was shot. You go through a driveway's gates heading up to a home. You're the one that's going to turn that family's life upside down because of the news you have to break. 
That's the deadliness of the last enemy this morning. And I wonder this morning, is there someone here and the sting's still there? You know how the last enemy turns happiness into heartbreak. You know how the last enemy turns gladness into sadness. And how the last enemy turns realities into memories. The deadliness of the sin. Many a time in my early days here, I used to go and visit our wee friend Sandy Heaney. Him and me would sit in the front room on there. And there wasn't a time he didn't point to a card that sat in the mantelpiece. He says, that's the last card my wife gave me. And he says, the pain of grief and loss nobody can describe. And I know there's some here today And maybe for someone here this week, you've got it tough. It's as raw as if it happened yesterday. But here's what the Lord Jesus wants you to do. Look upon my face as you see it in John eleven thirty five. For there you'll see tears on my face. And I don't want you this morning to see those tears. I want you to look at those tears and learn from them tears that was on my face. I understand your pain. I feel your sorrow. You know what those tears tell me? Those tears tell me the words of Psalm 34, verse 18, that the Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart. The deadliness of the Sabbath. There's those of you this morning and you know what I'm talking about. The pain that reaches into the innermost parts of the mind and the heart. But Jesus knows. And for you men who are sitting here today with your wives, and for you wives who are sitting with your husbands, listen, life's good at the moment. The stark reality is this, it won't always be good and it won't always be like this. It won't always be like the way as you know it now. And that's how deadly the last enemy is. The deadliness of the last enemy. You want to take a look just for a few moments at the depravity of the last enemy because in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, we see the depravity of the last enemy. You'll never see the depravity of death more so at the place called Calvary. 
When Christ became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, listen, death's real. The last enemy's real. And the last enemy was at Calvary that day to claim its place, but it was there to claim its praise. His praise was Christ. His praise that day wasn't the two thieves. No, his praise was Christ. Christ, the giver of all life. Christ, the giver of eternal life. But the last enemy at Calvary, Christ was his praise. That day when Christ hung upon the cross, Death looked on Christ as its prey. Ye may be the giver of life, but I am the taker of life. And at the place which is called Calvary, the king of terrors, the last enemy, waited, waited for this moment. And you'll notice Christ didn't fight death. He didn't fight the last enemy. He faced it. And child of God, listen, he tasted death for every man. He tasted death, O oh child of God, for you. He tasted death, O oh sinner man, for you. He tasted death for all of us. And that's why, child of God, we need to be at the Lord's table every Lord's Day morning to remember that He tasted death for you. He tasted death for me. He didn't fight it, no, He faced it. And death, the enemy of God, the enemy of Christ, the enemy of life, Looked on Christ that day as a vulture. How death must have rejoiced when he bowed his head. How hell must have rejoiced when death claimed its prey. And thank God for the Lord's table. For it brings us face to face to that day when Christ faced the last enemy head on, head on. And I'll tell you, death was no more depraved than the day when he rose his head at Calvary. The deadliness of this enemy, the depravity of this enemy. Oh, glory to God. What about the defeat of this enemy? Ha <laughs> ha, death is defeated. I love what Paul Peter said in Acts chapter 2, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Death could not hold its prey. Oh, this is mighty. This is wonderful. The defeat of the last enemy. Oh, yes, the common man, any of us all. Yes, we all face it. And it's only a matter of time when it comes to us. But the, here's the glorious news. The victim of Calvary became the victor on the third day. Glory to God. Death is defeated. Oh, I thought there'd been more than one would shout hallelujah. My goodness me. I'm telling you this morning, listen. Listen, death, death must not be dreaded, child of God. Death must not be feared. The risen Christ has defeated death. And thank God through faith in the risen, in the resurrected Christ, I can tell you, we too are more than conquerors, even over the last enemy of death. You know, 
Death doesn't have the victory over us. We have the victory over death. I remember the pastor, Bill McJilkin, some of you have remembered him. Saintly man of God. He and I were having a cup of coffee one day and we're talking about the death of Ivan Thomas. And he says, it's, it's sad, isn't it, Mr. Midgilton? It's sad. But he says, George, death for the servant of God is not the end. It's his promotion. I thought that was lovely. Death for the believer. Friend, it's promotion. I could take you to a wee graveside, a wee graveside of a young RUC constable. And at the bottom of his graveside, at the headstone, are written these words, promoted the glory. Not good. Promoted the glory. The last enemy. He has his vision in all of us. There's the deadliness of the last enemy. There's the depravity of the last enemy. There's the defeat of the last enemy. I love that wee course, you know. Because Christ defeated death that day. See me. See you, child of God. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Jesus died all my sins to atone. At the river I'll see. He'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Yesterday afternoon, I called at the home of the late Bertie Copeland. Tracy and me did before I come up to Kilkeel here. Bertie was at the Sunday night meeting. He opened the prayer meeting. And he closed the prayer meeting. Him and Mary got into the car and the wee girl Caroline and they travelled up to the caravan in Newcastle. He went to bed like any other night. Bang, that was it all over. I'm telling you one safe friend, it could be all over before dinner time for you. I tell you, it could be all over for me. But I know where I'm going. And I'm going to finish with this note. The destruction of the last enemy. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Do you see death now? It's defeated, but it's not destroyed. It's defeated, but it's not destroyed. Death still makes its way into the family circle. Death still breaks the link. We still must face the truth of God. We all must die. But as I stood at Bertie Croupland's grave on Wednesday, I said, The sky, not the grave, is our goal. You know, old friend, this morning, whether we live or whether we die, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Here's what God wants you to know before I finish. It's not death today. I'll repeat that. It's not death for the believer today. Do you know what death does? Death cuts the rope and allows the ship to sail freely into its safe haven. Do you know what death does? Death is the chariot that carries the saints of God to God. You know what death is? Death is the arm that carries God's children into the serenity and into the brilliance of the Father's house. At the end of the millennial reign, 
the destruction of death is this. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And if you read, if you read Revelation 21 and 4, then there shall be no more death. You see me this morning. Though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh will I see God. Death swallowed up in victory. And thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is child of God. It is not death to die. Praise his name. Praise his name. But unsafe friend, you get it right. You get the Christ before death takes you. It is not death to die. May God comfort us with this word to our hearts this morning. Our class.